The vast majority of people daydream every single day, with neuroscientists estimating that we spend around 30 to 50% of our lives in fantasy. Furthermore, a minority of people take this indulgence even further and develop an obscure syndrome called daydreaming disorder, also known as maladaptive daydreaming. Here, people with this condition daydream for hours on end and neglect their real-life relationships and responsibilities in favour of their fantastical fantasy worlds. This video is all about how and why your brain generates daydreams, how some people become totally addicted to their daydreams, and what daydreams tell us about our unconscious minds. Daydreaming is the brain's way of conjuring alternate realities, which it achieves by blending your memory traces and desires. Typically, these mental adventures oscillate between past recollections and tempting visions of the future, in which we replay old memories and then reimagine them with fictional twists. In addition, our brains also construct entirely new scenarios out of a much broader variety of loosely connected memories. Here, this dynamic brain activity enables us to create totally new and even extreme scenarios that you may never have actually experienced before. Fascinatingly though, research suggests that most people's daydreams actually feature more mundane kinds of content, and that social interactions dominate most people's daydreams featuring imagined personal or professional success, romance or adventure. And whilst research is rather obscure regarding the exact content and functions of daydreaming, neuroscience research is slowly beginning to investigate this fascinating aspect of our lives, and is unveiling that daydreaming appears to possess distinct neurological purposes, which we shall uncover later in the video. But first, we shall look at how your brain generates daydreams and what this activity has in common with actual dreams. Daydreaming is generated by a neural network called the Default Mode Network, or DMN. Here, the DMN orchestrates various mental processes, which also include more general processes like thinking and memory recall and it is also a major contributor to your overall sense of self. Structurally, the default mode network is formed of three subsystems, which include anterior, posterior and core. The anterior DMN includes the dorsomedial prefrontal cortex, which activates during thinking. The posterior DMN, however, includes two regions. Firstly, the medial temporal lobe, which stores your memories and the precuneus, which generates imagined visual imagery. Finally, the core DMN, which is formed of the posterior cingulate cortex, or PCC, is a special region which is important for directing your attention. Sometimes this region is connected with other areas of your brain which are processing your external environment, which enables you to focus on your external world. But, when the PCC then decreases its connections with these external areas and instead increases its connections with the anterior and posterior DMN, this then pulls your attention away from your external world and towards your internal world instead. Therefore, when your default mode network is highly active, this is therefore associated with elevated internal cognition. And whilst research into daydreaming is unfortunately sparse, experiments which have investigated the brain during fantasy have reported that daydreaming appears to be generated by rapid, moment-to-moment -moment new connections forming amongst these three DMN subsystems. This activity likely reflects the cascade of individual thoughts, memories and visual imagery that are generated throughout daydreaming. Whereas when your posterior cingulate cortex disconnects from other DMN subsystems and plugs itself back into circuits which process your external world, this causes your internal simulations to collapse again and your focus to return to the real world. Therefore, 
The posterior cingulate cortex is thought to act as a toggling mechanism, one which enables you to flexibly switch your attention between your internal and external worlds. Naturally though, this process can of course go wrong, and it is known to contribute to the poor attention with an attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, and of course, is a potential mechanism underlying daydreaming disorder. Daydreaming disorder, or maladaptive daydreaming, is characterised by pathological levels of fantasy. Here, approximately 4% of people take this escapism to the extreme, immersing themselves in their imaginary worlds to the point that daydreaming becomes an addictive obsession, as the individual actively starts to replace the real world with their inner fantasy world. Here, maladaptive daydreamers report creating structured and elaborate story-like narratives featuring an idealised sense of self, and things which appeal to the person's individual desire for power, social status, or lifestyle. In this way, many daydreamers gain their inspiration from books or movies that they extensively consume, or they may utilise gaming to simulate their desired identities and lifestyles. Here, failure to re-engage in daydreaming begins to generate intense craving, negative emotions, and difficulty in keeping their daydreaming frequency under control. As a result, this disorder typically has severe disruptions on a person's real-life relationships, academic and professional responsibilities, and their ability to concentrate on their real lives. This severe impact on daily life can naturally cause them to experience extreme distress, with such individuals typically suffering in total secret, as many maladapted daydreamers are totally oblivious to the existence of this disorder, and lack the awareness that anyone else daydreams as extensively as they do. And even amongst healthcare professionals, this disorder is also relatively unknown, with maladaptive daydreaming only having been formally conceptualised as recently as 2002, and has yet to be included within the current edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Nonetheless, as you may have come to suspect, evidence suggests that maladaptive daydreaming may therefore result from abnormal activity within the default mode network. This is because the amount of time that people spend daydreaming correlates with the amount of activity within regions of this network, in that people who spend excessive amounts of time daydreaming show less efficiency at keeping their attention focused on their external world. But of course, daydreaming isn't the only time that we spend focused on our own internal simulations. Decades of research indicates that a primary function of normal dreaming is for the consolidation of memories, which in simple terms means the conversion of short-term memory into long-term memory. Here, the complementary learning systems theory holds that new memories, which are held within the medial temporal lobe, including the hippocampus, are then converted into long-term memories, which are distributed across the cerebral cortex. Here it has been proposed that the default mode network is crucial for this memory consolidation process, as through this replay and creative reconstruction of your memory traces, this may enable these new memories to be copied and redistributed. This is called the Cascaded Memory Systems model, and as has already been stated, this process seems to underlie actual dreams, because when you are dreaming, it is your default mode network system which activates as opposed to when you are on deep sleep and less likely to be dreaming. As such, it has been suggested that normal daydreaming may also serve this memory consolidation process, as memory consolidation during awake periods specifically takes place during these periods of distraction and mind wandering. In other words, it takes place when the default mode network is activated. And in addition to all of this, the default mode network is also known to be critical for unconscious processing. Here, under the unconscious thought effect, it has been repeatedly shown in experiments that better choices are made after an initial period of distraction. In other words, after a period of mind wandering or sleep. This suggests that this network also contributes to unconscious decision making. 
but you can learn more about that in future videos.